Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. <laughs> Why do you make me laugh every time I say that? I don't know. <laughs> just, you make me laugh at it. <laughs> but anyways, what we're talking about today is cost of owning a home just has jumped a staggering 26% since the pandemic with families forking over $1,500 a month more. Is it true? I think it is, but who knows? That's what this article is about. Things, obviously, I, in some areas, the house values doubled since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Literally doubled. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. 100%. But you know what's something interesting? <clears throat> Nick, who has a Reventure app, uh, like I was watching one of his yeah, videos, yeah, yeah. and he was in West Virginia, and a house sold in 1990 for 500000 and pretty much, they're selling it now for only 600000 something like that. So depending on the area, so why, I'm, why am I bringing that up? Is It was interesting. Since 1990 till now, the, the value only increased 100000 mm -hmm. So if you take inflation, it actually lost value. I know it's an isolated area in West Virginia. It's a, I think that he was in the capital of West Virginia okay. or something. But it was a good, really good video. You guys should check it out and check out his channel. But in the meantime, before we even talk about this, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Share, like, and hit the bell notification. Bill, start us off. In 2020, average Americans were paying $1,202 in home ownership costs. That figure has jumped roughly $300 in four years. That doesn't sound like accurate or... or, or hmm. Well, uh, let's keep reading. All right. 2020, you said. 2020. Okay. <clears throat> American families are spending more than $300 per month in home ownership costs compared to before the pandemic, according to a new report. So this is probably, this isn't including your mortgage. I think this is home it, ownership. The, 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 yeah, the next sentence yeah. says, this figure does not include the mortgage costs. Okay, yeah, it can't, it'll say this can't include mortgage. That's what I was saying. Okay, that okay. doesn't so make that's sense. making a little more sense now. All right. All right, currently, homeowners are shelling out an average of $1,510 in homeownership costs. That figure includes expenditures such as taxes, homeowners insurance, maintenance, utility bills, etc. In 2020, that figure sat at an average of $1,202 per month, according to the analysis by Bankrate. Which you kind of, it, it makes sense because um, they're not talking about mortgages because mortgages freaking went up like nuts. Right. Yeah, and that wouldn't be fair for home ownership costs because it depends on when you buy your yeah, house. Yeah, so they're, et cetera, they're, they're talking about taxes, insurance, yeah. and but in Florida, it went up a lot more than that because of just homeowners insurance and even on taxes. Uh, it depends. It, it depends on when. Again, back to when you bought the house. The taxes don't necessarily go up until you purchase the home. Right, but homeowners insurance went up dramatically. Right, we went up uh, what fourteen percent. So, but this is monthly. Okay. So it's not you know insurance didn't go up three hundred dollars per month, you know unless you were in an area, so this could be a different. Right. So, average. so so this they're talking about a monthly expense. Monthly from Twelve hundred to fifteen ten. Right. So three hundred additional dollars per month, you know even at fourteen percent for your average homeowners insurance, not waterfront stuff, but mm -hmm. you know you're still talking like another forty or fifty bucks plus HOA dues. I know those have gone up. Tremendously. That's because been because of insurance again. Yeah, but that exactly insurance and um, you know if you're in a like a condo or a townhouse three stories or above, depending on when it was built and how close you are to the water, which pretty much everybody's close to the water here, mm -hmm. it went up a lot. So let's keep reading on. Um, this represents about a 26% jump in costs in four years. That's high. It is high. It was really eye-opening to see just how much it costs to maintain a home. Jeff Ostra was. Ostrowski said, sorry, What's his name? <laughs> sorry, Jeff O said, an analyst at Bankrate told Bloomberg, until you own a house, it doesn't draw on you how much money you're throwing into the house every month and year. Since February 2020, American consumers' prices have jumped a staggering 20.8%. Meanwhile, home prices have jumped nearly 50% in the same time period according to resi Club. let's talk about that okay a lot of people are going to comment because i was getting comments already on some mm -hmm. other videos we did mm -hmm. saying hey you know what i'm just going to rent but here's here's the caveat to that yes you could just rent obviously but the the owner of the home that's renting it to you are not going to lose money every month right 
So if their cost goes up, they're going to pass that cost over to you. Of course, it doesn't change. No, no. So whether you're renting or you're owning, if it's going to it's going to affect you. This cost, you pay it one way or another. Right, because the 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 landlord is going to make sure if they get an increase of fifty dollars a month for their rent or excuse me for their insurance as an example they're going to pass that on they're not just it's not going to come out of their bottom line they've got to make a certain amount of money now where you might see a savings truly would be if you're maybe renting in an apartment so yeah. like, like an actual apartment i know different people use verbiage like oh, apartment as a condo I, I, yeah i didn't think of that yeah but you could save some money potentially um, if you were renting an apartment per se, so because they're more broad and I do know, just paying attention to some of the stuff that's coming online in my area, um, those rental rates are coming down. They are by no stretch inexpensive, but they, they've definitely started to soften comparatively. Um, and I know like our rental rates have kind of stabilized, but they're going up. We're seeing increases in our rental rates just for single family homes, townhouses, and villas simply because of the insurance rate increases and uh, things of that nature. And knowing that they're going to have to put a roof on maybe sooner than later. So they're making sure they have the money to cover it. Right. Go ahead. Okay. The current mortgage payment across America sits at $2,317 per month. The bank rate study found that across the U.S. nearly the cost of home ownership sits at $18,118 in 2024, the annual. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Hawaii, California, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Connecticut are the states with the highest additional home ownership costs, all sitting above 23,000 per year. Like Hawaii, I love Hawaii. Um, I couldn't afford to live there. <laughs> California, I, 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 it's beautiful. I just couldn't afford to live there. Massachusetts, I lived in New Hampshire. I wouldn't live there. New Jersey, Connecticut. Yeah, I mean, all these states is true because I've, I've been to all these states numerous times and they are super, super expensive. Right, they really are. So yeah, I could see home ownership going, going up. I would love, you know, when I spent some time in Hawaii, I would love to own a house there, but it's just, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna be a slave to my house and just live there? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's talk about throwing some money away, you know. You know, and, and kind of going back to the. I'm not necessarily just gonna read this article straight away, but you know, the cost of owning a home. You know, when I said that it, you could save some money by renting, obviously, if you can't, you, you might be able to save some month-to-month -month money there because you just might not be able to afford a house. Because when you own that house, something to just take into consideration, even when you're renting. You know, you if you own the house, if the AC breaks, you need to pay for it. Right. Period. Like it doesn't matter. Well, look at this. My my water heater broke. Right. I had no choice. Right. I was like, here, yeah, here's a water heater. Right. But if you're renting, you know, you call the landlord and they've got to get it fixed. Yeah. You know, the refrigerator breaks, a new refrigerator shows up, or they get it fixed. You know, those kind of things. So. It's, that's kind of nice because it gives you a little bit of freedom, but you're also not building wealth. But if you just can't afford it right now, that's okay too. It, it really is. Oh, I have no, no issues yeah. with renting right now, right. especially, you know, I, do I think it's a great time to buy a house? No, I really don't. But for some, but each person is different and each location is different. Exactly. Every, you know, to each their own. So I say it's always important to figure out your why. Why are you buying? Um, and no, does renting long term save you money? month to month, well, you're building no equity in anything. You're helping the landlord build equity in their property. Yeah, but don't forget, well. if, so. you're, if you're putting a minimum amount down and then you get into mortgage, pretty much the first few years is pretty much all interest. Of course, yeah, that's in, we could get it. We, could, we actually should do a video on the whole interest cycle. Yeah. You know, and then when you refinance, you really you start Get a mortgage again. guy to be in the video. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> Utah, Idaho and Hawaii have all seen the biggest percentage of increases since 2020. Residents shelling out at least 38% more in hidden costs, according to Bankrate. Mr. O, 
because <laughs> I can't pronounce his name. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to. Uh, uh, strop, said that speed. some costs might be higher for some homeowners than others. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, for example, families who have bought a new home likely spend far less on maintenance costs than the average American. Let's talk about okay. that a little bit. Okay, new construction. Yep. Some areas, new construction is cheaper than existing homes. Correct. Okay, because the builders, we did a whole video on it, they're getting in trouble a little bit. Not saying they're going downhill, but some of them are in trouble and they, they're, they're giving incentives to sell the homes. I don't know if they would say, I can't quite say they're in trouble, but I think they're concerned that they're gonna get in trouble. But I know- They wanna uh, unload some I, uh, assets. I mean, like we do a lot of new construction yeah. inspections, okay? Yep. And what I'm noticing when I go do those new inspections on new homes, they're like, oh, but they have bull nose, they have crown molding, they have upgraded floors, and they're like, yeah, we didn't pay for that. The builder threw it in. Two years ago, that would have never happened. Well, yeah, two years ago was like the heyday for yeah. builders. You couldn't even get in the door. Um, you were doing bids just to get a lot. You're in a lottery system. You know, they could rake you over the coals back then. So so my, my point is that, yes, okay, maintenance on a brand new house is a lot less. Absolutely. You know, it's extremely a lot less. You don't have to change the panel. You don't have to change your water heater, yeah. you don't, the air conditioning. Everything is new. Right, right. You know you have at least seven years before something. And a lot of things are still under warranty. Mm -hmm. So you have a few years, so yeah, your maintenance costs are gonna be less. But, you know, some people like the older houses, especially now, you know, starter homes, people are, you know, buying them and they buy enough more than they can chew when it comes to maintenance. Right, well, remember too, like just because we have new construction here doesn't mean everybody has new construction. That's you know, true. We just happen to be in an area that has a lot of new construction because we have the area and the, you know, the land to do it, but there's plenty of big cities that you have to drive so far away to get into new construction. Speaking of land, we're gonna do a video on this too. Like when I drove to, to St. Augustine a couple days ago, mm -hmm. man, Florida has a lot of land. You know, yeah, you, and just, you don't need to drive to St. Augustine, just go no, east when a I was bit. Yeah, it's when crazy, I was going, isn't it? It's, it's crazy, there right, I go. It's certainly better to be overprepared and have some extra money sitting in high yield savings account as opposed to underprepared and scrambling. 100% agree. Definitely. I think that you should have six month emergency funds. Yep. I like a year emergency funds because you never know what could happen. But I think that if you're going to buy a house and, and you, don't, you don't have any reserves or like the bank likes to see, some banks like to see a couple of months, whatever, you shouldn't buy that house. Right. If you're going into a situation that you're buying a house and you're gonna be broke after you leave that closing, mm -hmm. I strongly recommend not to buy that house. Yeah, it, you need to make sure. And I'm a guy that does inspections on the house right. and Bill's a guy but, that sells the house. But you gotta have a foundation. You should not, I know everybody wants a house and it just might not be the right time. Just, just being honest. Like I wanna sell a house all day, but you know, you've gotta make sure, you don't wanna lose the house that you worked so hard to get. But, but it's, not, it's not only that, but if you buy a house and you're in trouble and you have to sell it in the next year or two. But you're not gonna make any money. You're gonna, you're lose, gonna money. lose money. That's what I'm saying, Don't no. Everybody right now, if you think for one second that you can buy a house today and in one or two years turn around and sell that house and make a profit, that is very hard to do. Unless you're, I'm not talking we're flippers and we're investors, just buying a house and then selling a house in two years. It's just not gonna appreciate enough to cover no. your expenses. No. And I'm not even talking about real, realtor costs. I'm and we're gonna do a video expenses. on what it really costs to sell a house. Yeah, we're gonna go through that. We're gonna, we're gonna do that. Housing has become a hot button topic ahead of November's election. A recent Gallup poll found that housing costs was the top concern for voters with inflation coming in second place. Both President Biden a former pre and President, former President Donald Trump have talked about ways to slow the increasing costs of home ownership. So let's talk about that real quick. What could they really do? They're gonna lower interest rates. Say they, 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 came, that, they came and forced the Fed's lower interest rates, but anyways. But say they lower, they lower interest rates. That's not gonna cause the housing Inflation to go, is gonna go up. Right, then the housing costs are gonna go up because it's gonna open the door to more people purchasing. So if people woke up tomorrow and said, okay, rates right now are like six and three quarters, seven, and they woke up tomorrow and the rates are four and a half. 
this and it's gonna be such a scramble to buy houses what is what's gonna happen to the cost of houses and it's gonna be insane it's gonna be insane and builders are gonna go back to like no you want bull nose you want crown molding mm -hmm. Well, you're paying for that and their prices are going to go up at the end of the day it's all going to go up i mean it's the, a vicious fixes, vicious it's a vicious vicious the fix is long term remember nothing is short term this isn't we're not going to snap our fingers and get out of this we need more housing units we need more housing starts not apartments we need housing starts mm -hmm. to to we and we're not going to build our way out of this overnight this is it took us you know 20 plus years to get into the building recess right we need to build our way out of it but it's going to take time and those are some of the things with making it a little bit easier for builders to get permits and starts and things like that and there's not so much bureaucracy maybe tied up into it just talking to a lot of people um that might be one way they could do it yeah but just again like we, we've talked before throwing money at things is probably not going to make it's it. not going to do it it's going to be a band-aid yeah we have to create a big incentive for housing so that we have housing. Trump told the Las Vegas Review Journal this week, the housing prices, they're just unaffordable for anybody. That's why you have so many people living in the streets. They don't have the money and the interest rates are way too high. Right, and you know, and it's a catch 22. You lower interest rates, the prices are gonna go up. Right. This is why we have to go, we, we, we keep saying it over and over again, interest rates aren't just gonna plummet down. They're not gonna crash down, to my, my least favorite word. No. In April, Biden announced plans to increase affordability housing across the country. The president also discussed bringing down housing costs during the State of the Union address. For millions of renters, we're cracking down on big landlords who break antitrust laws by price fixing, driving up rates, Biden said in March. Hmm. All right, I, un I understand that part, you know, but, you know, you can't, there was a proposal going out that you have to, you'll cap all the renters. They, they could only increase rent so far. You know, there was a proposal that people were talking about. I, I get it. I understand that. But if people can't, if they're losing money on the house, it's not going to be a rental anymore. Right. They're just going to be like, fine, your lease is or, terminated and they're going to get rid of the house. Yeah. Or they're going to start off at a much higher rent at the beginning because they're like, hey, we only go up 5% a year, so let's increase the rent right away. Right, but it sounds to me like the normal re knee-jerk reaction. We can, we can policy our way out of something, right? Instead of fixing the few issues, we're gonna apply a punishment to the mass. Yeah, and you can't do that. And, and most landlords, believe it or not, are mom and pop people. Right. They own one or two homes. It's yeah. like, everybody thinks all these freaking big corporations it's, it's not are, true. are around and they own all the rentals. It's no. not true. It's these mom and pop people. They are. I had rentals. Yeah. That's, it's usually people, most of the renters, the investors are, they own one or two or three, four properties max. Yeah, I've cut the, it's, Biden says, I've cut the red tape so builders can get federal financing, which already is helping build a record 1.7 million housing units nationwide. <laughs> Now pass my plan and build and reinvent 2 million affordable homes to bring those rents down. Okay, <laughs> I, have, I have my two cents with that. They're like, hey, let's take these commercial, you know, commercials crashing, yeah. you know. And so let's take some of these buildings and redo them into residential uh, buildings. Right. But there's so much price gouging going on. It's stupid. Oh, the federal government wants to buy an air conditioner? All right, for me and you, it's five, six thousand dollars, but for, for the federal government, it's thirty thousand. Right. You know. Yeah. It's price gouging, so it's it, throwing money at it. Okay, throw some money at it, but you got to do it smart. You have to do it in a way that you're not getting gouged. Mm -hmm. Take the politics out of it, and take you know, there's like five middle people. You know, by the time, okay, you order an air conditioner, since I was talking about it already. And then there's five people in the middle and everybody puts in their cut a little bit. And by the time it gets to the actual unit that mm -hmm. needs the air conditioner, it's five times the price. You right. need to cut all those middle people out. Mm -hmm. Cut out all that fluff and all the handouts and all the... It's right, just, the bureaucracy of everything. Yeah, it's just, it, if you're gonna do it, you gotta if, spend the money directly. Go to the factories that make the air conditioners and buy them directly from them and ship them to the place. Don't go from this person, this person, this person, and everybody adds on to it. Right. I know, I'm going on a rant. That's okay, I know. 
<laughs> but anyways, what do you guys think? Housing costs going up? Yes, I agree. Do you guys agree? Do you have anything to add? No, housing costs are going up and just be prepared. Yeah. Always be prepared and that you, you know, you never know when something bad's going to happen and just know that ins insurance isn't going to go backwards. Mm -hmm. Cost of milk is not going to come down. Right? It's not this isn't fuel where we see the price come up and down. Once people get used to a certain price, that's the price. Yeah. Period. And it's not going backwards. It may not go up for a while, but it's going to stay at that price. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. That insurance is going to go up. Do me a favor. Check out this video over here. Um, I put a lot of thought into it. I think you guys will enjoy it very much. And consider subscribing. It's really, greatly appreciated. Like, share, hit the bell notification, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you, and have a great day. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.